The future of software lies in systems that can modify their own design in real time to meet shifting demands. Now, researchers are finding ways to improve the reliability and safety of these systems. Join us as we speak with Barry Porter at Lancaster University to discuss self-designing software. This paper is about how future software systems might take a much more active role in their own design, working in collaboration with human engineers to achieve the best effect. Traditional software is typically packaged as a single big chunk of machine code. And while you might get some updates over time, which mean you have to restart the program, generally the programs don't change very much once they're running. In our research, we break software down into lots of really small building blocks and we allow software to continuously change which combinations of blocks it's using over time to optimize something of interest. And that's a little bit like um, having an aircraft where you can change the wing design or the engine design while you're flying. And we use this approach to allow software to continuously consider its own design and find better design, design permutations for different conditions. For this to happen effectively, the software needs to swap between different design configurations seamlessly and without errors. But to help with this, we've built a new kind of programming language, which is a general purpose systems language. And this language gives us a lot of extra safety of hot swapping code at runtime. So what this allows us to do is have, let's say, 10 different design options for a system and test each one of those design options in isolation. And when we then, at runtime, change between different software designs, the rules of our language make it so that we don't end up in some hybrid or middle state that hasn't been tested in each of those isolated tests. The system continuously tests different designs against real-world conditions, learning which configuration works best. We make two different kinds of design changes, and for both of these options, we take measurements at runtime of how a system is performing, how much energy it's using, how much memory it's using. And at the same time, we take measurements of the environment around the system. And for each of these conditions that we have at runtime, we learn by searching through our different design options to see which design option best works in each of these conditions. To manage errors, the system can test new designs offline first, ensuring better performance before going live. When a system is running, we have to learn what might be best or worst at runtime. So that means that for some of the time, we are trying things that are less good, and that might result in a less good user experience. So you might see a slower system for a few seconds while the system is trying out something to see if it works. And if that kind of user experience is important, then we might do much more kind of pre-training and pre-modeling before we get to that online learning environment. Looking ahead, the evolution of human engagement with these systems is key. How do we manage the interaction between humans and automation processes so that human engineers can firstly gain trust in how software is behaving? So if it's making its own design choices, how do I trust it's doing the right thing? And also build interfaces so that human engineers can gain clear explanations for what systems are doing, why they make these choices they do, and under which conditions they make those choices. There are also limits to what automation can do at the moment. So it might be that human engineers have ways of, of providing their creativity to the system to say, actually try this design option or try this option, and it might end up with something better. Find out more in self-designing software. A research article in the January 2025 communications of the ACM.